when uh, David asked me to participate in this, I was really grateful he gave me the active bit because so all I've got to do is convince 25% of you that, uh, <laughs> that it's active. Right? Because, of course, it's active. What else could it be? <laughs> so you're all familiar with this. Secondary wound healing, you get scar contracture. So this is the myofibroblast acting in the physiological context. And we've got a problem with Dupuytren's because the same cell, which we've seen this morning, the alpha smooth muscle actin with its specialized adhesions, these fibronexi. It's the same cell, but it persists and it contracts because it's got the same cellular protein as a smooth muscle cell. That's what alpha smooth muscle actin is. And we find lots of them in the early disease, but, and then they, it's the same cell that lays down the matrix and you get cords, but even in the, in the early cords, when you do a fasciectomy, you get histological nodules. You still have lots of these myofibroblasts. And if you localize those histological nodules in cords, they seem to be around the vicinity of the affected joints. The myofibroblasts have been shown extensively to attach to the matrix via these specialized adhesions. So here at, with this immunofluorescence staining for those adhesions and here with the electron micrograph, you can actually see there's the nucleus, the cell membrane is, is dotted here. So this is, this is from a publication by Boris Hines. Um, essentially that those alpha smooth muscle actin fibers will essentially connect with extracellular fibronectin. So it's got quite strong uh, adhesions to the matrix. And there's numerous publications showing that these myofibroblasts communicate with each other via Darren's junction. So these are like spot wells. So when one cell pulls, it pulls on the adjacent cell. And when it does that, it opens mechanosensitive channels in the other cell, and you get extracellular um, messengers flowing in like calcium ions. And the cells also communicate via gap junctions. So small molecules can pass directly from one cell to the next. And this means that these cells, and, and, and we showed this a couple of years ago, essentially function like a syncytium. So a bit like the myocardium, they, they, they work together. And if you take out those adherins or gap junctions, this is, this is obviously an in vitro experiment, you get about a 50% drop in contractility of, of this fibroblast populated lattice. And if you disassemble with cytochalazin, the rest of that contractile apparatus, so effectively taking out the cell to matrix junction as well, the whole thing collapses. So the cells are pulling on each other and they're pulling on the matrix. Now we've heard about TGF beta and the TGF beta is produced by the myofibroblasts and it then sits in the extracellular matrix and when the cells pull on the extracellular matrix, they activate latent TGF beta, which then drives the myofibroblast phenotype, so you get this vicious cycle. And there's any number of publications showing this high matrix turnover. So you get increased matrix production, but also increased matrix degradation by these matrix metalloproteinases. Now I've said that the myofibroblasts have a commonality with smooth muscle cells. They have the same contractile protein, but in fact they behave very differently. So smooth muscle cells contract and relax relatively rapidly, whereas the myofibroblasts will contract and sustain their, their, their contraction. So this is what I think happens. And clearly it's active. So <laughs> the myofibroblasts proliferate. They talk to each other, they, they connect to the matrix, and they contract the matrix. But you've got this situation of a high matrix turnover, so the cells will secrete matrix metalloproteinases, which degrade the matrix. But equally, they will lay down the matrix, which is now shortened. So you've now got the cells that contract and produce the matrix essentially actively leading to Dupuytren's contracture. Thank you. <laughs>